Chemistry. I'm Jen Dionisio. And I'm Gigi Naglek. We don't usually need much of an excuse to celebrate, no. and mm. today's really no exception. We heard you were coming, so we baked you a cake. Um, Jen, I thought you actually said you bought that one. Oh, sorry, sorry. Well, the point is that this is a perfect example of what we're going to talk about today, the classic pound cake. Um, can you remind me why it's called a pound cake? Sure. So, pound cakes follow a traditional one to one to one to one part ratio. So, the four ingredients are all measured out in the same proportions. Mm -hmm. So, you have flour, eggs, sugar, and butter. So, the f gluten in the flour and the protein in the egg combine to build a cake structure. And then the fats and the sugar and the butter combine to um, keep the cake from becoming too dense. They kind of lighten it up. So what you're saying is that it's really like a war between the ingredients that strengthen it and the ingredients that weaken it. Exactly. But um, you also need to add air to make a cake that's light and fluffy. Oh, yeah. And before the invention of electric mixers, a lot of recipes actually called for you to beat your cake manually for uh, upwards of an hour. I think my arm would fall off. <laughs> yeah, I think mine would too. Yeah. But then, scientific breakthrough. Hey. And here we have the creation of the two most common leavening agents, baking soda and baking powder. So these are the two most common leavening agents, and they release carbon dioxide into the batter, which create bubbles that expand when cooking and create that fluffier kind of cake. Okay, so this was in the second half of the 19th century, is that right? Yes. So what other innovations have happened since then that make our cakes so delicious? There are a couple. So um, one is the development of specialized cake flour. Oh, yes. um, it's finely milled and it is low protein and chlorine bleached. So um, the lower protein count keeps the cake from getting too gummy and tough. And the chlorine bleaching helps the cake incorporate water and disperse its fats, creating that, again, that fluffier cake. That seems to be the motto of all of these inventions. And then, around the same time, we also have the development of hydrogenated vegetable oils, um, which help to incorporate air, too. What about cake mixes? Ah, yes. So, around World War II, a lot of those new technologies I was just talking mm -hmm. about um, manufacturers combined them in a box and sold them to American consumers. So they don't quite follow the traditional one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio that you see in a pound cake, but they actually have a bit more sugar because that seemed to be the new sweeter taste palette that people were appreciating. But really by the 1950s, about half of all cakes made in America came out of a box. Wow. So, Jen, do you think there's anything wrong with cake from a box? No, not personally, except, you know, it feels good to say you've made something from scratch. That's course. true, that's true. But there are bakers who complain that the chlorine bleaching in the finely milled specialized cake flours mm -hmm. um, can taste the chlorine, so you don't really want a bleachy undertone to your cake. Um, and other bakers have a much stronger preference for butter over vegetable oil because, quite frankly, they think it just tastes better. So kind of up to you. You know, it seems to me, Jen, that the only way we're going to resolve this question is just to eat more cake, right? I, yeah, I think we can handle that. Happy, Happy baking! baking.